Hi, my name is George Massenberg. I'm here today to talk about GML kit. I want to talk about the GML parametric equalizer and I want to talk about the GML dynamic range controller. But more than anything else, I'd like to talk about the basic technology that goes into what we build. Why we build it, why I designed it, what it does, how that benefits you, how you can use it as a uh, as a real tool in your kit and uh, maybe show you a few things that uh, you didn't know about that it could do. Going back to 1965, 1966, I was a uh, young man in pro audio and uh, working in a studio called Recordings Incorporated in Baltimore, Maryland. We had a uh, a unique opportunity in the 60s to more or less invent recording. There was no rule necessarily. You listened to records that were coming out of Philadelphia and Detroit, and Los Angeles and New York and London, and you tried to make records as good as that. There were very few professional equipment manufacturers and dealers, and uh, the choices were limited. We needed to build a studio. Well. At our situation, studio in the middle of nowhere, Baltimore, completely broke, but hearing things on these records that we, uh, that we listened to, that we really wanted to uh, copy, to emulate, set us off in a path of designing equipment. That's what the studio business was, was building your own stuff, building your own room, and building your own console from what you imagined you wanted this stuff to sound like. So there was a lot of trial and error. We set out to build our own equalizer. And in the 60s, this meant uh, starting from scratch, deciding what componentry to use. And we decided to try to use a new class of filters that only used resistors and capacitors because we couldn't afford inductors, um, which is how you would build a peaking filter in the 60s. So here's where we started with the, uh, with the original ITI parametric EQ was to build a sweep frequency peak filter so that we could zero in a little bit more on the frequencies in between where you could hit on a Pultec EQ or a Lang EQ and certainly in between where you could get on a seven band graphic. A friend of mine named Bob Mishaw that went on to work at NSA and this is documented on our website built a um, a small equalizer with a um, preset Q filter and boost and cut controls, and I did a record with it. Found that the filters were taking out a little bit too much and wanted to um, sharpen the uh, Q or the shape of the filter. That led to some serious work in how to make Q variable without changing the depth of the Q. Now, you know, in the Pultec EQ, you, you can change the Q with the, uh, it's called a bandwidth control. You can change the Q with the bandwidth control, but as you increase the Q, making it a sharper number, the level of the peak grows um, higher. So I built a circuit, designed and tested and built a circuit that would keep the uh, top of the peak uh, constant while you change the shape of the peak. So you could really zero in on, on an artifact and then adjust the shape of the peak to, to choose how much around the peak you wanted to include. Specifically, what I wanted to do was to tune to a peak and then reduce the level of a peak on an instrument like a snare drum or an acoustic guitar or a piano. Instruments, acoustic instruments that are characterized by, you know, a rich set of resonances, some of which are part of the music and others of which you think might be getting away with that with that um, nasty little uh, nasty little peak that gets in the way of the vocal or a guitar or something else. Anyway, I, I came up with a circuit, worked pretty well, and we started to test how to implement it in various uh, devices. We built a console, a 20 input, 16 output uh, recording console at ITI. This is uh, ITI, circa 1971. This is uh, Don Schwartz, uh, who's passed away, and Don Bartow, a good friend who sent me this picture, 
and we're recording something for uh, Maryland Public Broadcasting on the original ITI board in Hunt Valley, Maryland. We found that it was so demanding a task that we had to build our own op amps. The op amps of the day were basically the Fairchild 709 to 702, which wasn't a serious op amp. A few others, but uh, really good linear op amps were yet to come. So we built uh, an engineer, a very good engineer named Chick Sauter, and I built a discrete op amp that operated on uh, high voltage rails and, and fairly good performance. But that was the basis of the ITI equalizer that was released uh, in 1971, early 1972, shown at the AES show in New York in 1971. And I gave the paper on the original parametric equalizer in Los Angeles in May of 1972. And that paper is still floating around. What it did more than anything else was to coin the term parametric. The basic T-filter, the heart of the circuit, the T-filter, was a very common radio circuit, uh, radio engineering circuit. Controlling the Q of the device was unique and proprietary, and nobody has uh, really done it quite the way uh, we did at the time, and the way we've continued to do for the last 30-odd years, soon to be 40 years. What, uh, what, this, what this device uh, led us to was the realization that as good as we thought it was, as flexible as we thought it was, the difficult thing was going to be to sell it because nobody knew what its strength was. And so I spent the next 10 years selling the parametric equalizer.